Well, most are, big most big backs are doing great things. Most big backs are viewed kind of uh, and play often as, as battering rams. Um, and and Derek doesn't really play like that. Can, can you can you talk to that idea that? He's kind of a different uh, guy as as a big back, and maybe how his durability um, benefits from him not being the battering ram type. Well, he's he's obviously, as you all know, he's he's incredibly talented, you know. Um, and I think <laughs> Joe jokingly said, but if you ask him, I think he thinks he's a little scat back, anyways. Um, but, you know, obviously, you know, with his physical his physique, um, being a bigger guy, he, he can, you know, in the way he takes care of his body, he can, uh, he is durable. Uh, and, and then, obviously, he has the ability to make people miss and then the speed to run away from people. So, uh, he's, 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 got, he's got a lot of, like I said, he's incredibly talented and, and skilled in many ways. You know, I, I wish I could explain it other than genetics. He's got he's got great DNA. He's an awfully big target. Would you say he takes a few hits considering the size of the target? Yeah, you know, he, he's only been hit. You know, people get true square shots on him. He's, he's taken a, only a few, you know, for the, the size that he is. I would agree with that. Uh, and I think some of it as as – we continue to coach him about getting his pad level down, you know, as he goes through the line of scrimmage, but where, where he protects himself is as he gets through the line of scrimmage and, and contact is imminent, he does a pretty good job of getting his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage and then getting his pads down. And so, although he's taking sh uh, hits, sometimes they're hitting the top of the shoulder pads, you know, or, you know, there's not a lot of body to hit, you know, where, where it's hard is, if he gets caught going through the line of scrimmage before he can get square and now he gets hit from the side or, you know, someone as he's falling, someone can, can get a shot on him, but, it, but he does a good job of uh, protecting himself by getting his pads down uh, most of the time. Uh, Jim. And, and Tony, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I, I guess one thing that you, that, we, that, that we've all discovered and certainly you know it better than anyone is just how he kind of beats himself up if he does anything wrong he, he goes for over 250 he goes for 250 Sunday eclipses 2000 he seemed like he was upset over the fumble are there times when you have to kind of tell him hey lighten up a little bit or, or can you ever get through him there when he tries to be a perfection uh both you know there are times uh and and coaching over the past three seasons you know, there's you, every, every guy is different and he does, he is hard on himself. He's probably harder on himself than anybody else um, because he is such a perfectionist. So there's a time when, when he makes a mistake and, you know, sometimes I think some of it is learning the guy and there's some mistakes that I can get after him pretty good and, and deal with it. And then there are times when I know I can, I can make the point, but then let him be and he'll be just fine. But, uh, Derek is, is, is very respectful. He's very receptive. He listens to whether it be Raves or myself or Art. Um, whenever you give him a coaching point, he may be upset with himself. He'll listen, he'll hear you, and then he'll go, and then he'll go on about his business. And then, you know, he comes back from it. Uh, but he's just so competitive and, and wants to be perfect. And, you know, what a blessing to coach someone like that, as opposed to someone that's a know-it-all and, don't want to listen and think that they have all the answers. It's, it's, you know, it's really, really fun to coach someone who, who does listen and who, who does want to be a perfectionist. Uh, Teresa. That said, Tony, uh, he's had a lot of carries, uh, and you know, he, he you ask him about it, and he almost takes offense. Uh, do you have to m monitor those at all, or uh, you just keep keep handing him the ball as long as he keeps running this way? You know, that's that's you obviously as a coach, you worry about it. But if you ask him, he says this is what he gets paid to do. This is why he trains the way he trains in the off season. Um, and we all know that 
you know, there are, t- there are guys that, that can handle and guys that can't. Um, but to this point, he's he's proven to us that he's durable uh, and that, that we can count on him. And certainly he's a guy that when games get tight, he's proven that he can be counted on and, and he wants to be in there and he wants to do whatever he can do to help this team win and win. And so it's hard, it's hard to take, it's hard for me or Braves or Art to, to, to take a guy off the field that is as valuable uh, to this team as he is. Uh, so do you worry about it? You know, I, don't, I wouldn't say worry about it. Is it in the back of your mind? Sure. You, you'd like to just take some off him, but I mean, he is what he is and, and he enjoys doing it. He enjoys helping his team in whatever way that he can. Cause I, I, you know, if we were throwing the ball 50 times and that was the way we had to do it to win, he'd be in there. He'd want to be in there doing the same thing in pass protection if that's what it took to win. So we'll just keep our auto keep designing them and, and we'll keep running them. Uh, I'm running short on time, but I'm going to try to get to everybody. So quick questions uh, here, uh, John. Yeah, Tony, similar lines, but uh, in terms of the number of carries for them, I, I, it seems like during the season, the regular season, you guys would try and, and conserve a little bit, you know, m- maybe thinking you know, to games down the line. I wonder if there's less of that thought process in the playoffs because you never know if you've got a game next week. Uh, you know, obviously during the season, if you can do a regular season as much as we could, but, you know, you, you love to monitor it. And I kind of try to keep track of, um, you know, during the game of where he is in terms of carries, but, you know, just he, he he's a professional and he wants to be in there. And if he in, if he can help us win the game, then that's that's what we have to do to win. Then that's what we'll have to do. Uh, and Robbie, I know you say you're short on time. I'll stay an extra five minutes if, if you need me to. Okay, so oh, I've got Keith. Play. I don't have Keith. I, I have no yet. issue. Okay, uh, hanging on. Okay, uh, Teron. Yeah, what's up, Coach Dudes? Um, with with Derek and, and this whole theme of the carries, you know, the high volume, how, how much do you think about just what's available to you guys now as far as medicine is concerned and, and just, just rehab, just that whole concept? You know, I don't get into that. Um, you know, again, it's a little bit different because these guys are professionals, so they all have their own routines and they all have their – own time that they spend with with our trainers and with Frank uh, and, and the weight room staff. So I don't get involved in that. They, I, I coach them when they show up. You know what they do in with the trainers and the strength staff. That that's on them as professionals. Um, obviously, we encourage it. And hey, man, take care of your body. Make sure you get some extra rehab. Make sure you're doing the things that you know. Recover. Raves make sure that they get time uh, in the schedule to do recovery and things like that. Um, so it's my job just to trust whatever Frank and Todd tells them to do that they're doing it and, uh, doing it the correct way. And, and they'll have themselves from a physical standpoint, ready to play on Sundays. And it's our job to make sure from a mental standpoint that they're sharp and ready to go on Sunday. Appreciate it. Uh, Joe Rexford. Yeah, Tony, I remember about a year ago, you, you talked about Derek and sort of his progress in terms of reading things, knowing when to hit, when to stay patient, things like that, and how that, you know, helped his production. It, anything this year that he's added or improved on, on on that front or any other front that's, you know, helped him be even more productive? You know, obviously give give credit to the entire offense, you know, whether it be Ryan getting us in the right play, uh, the old line tight ends blocking at the line of scrimmage. And then um, I think um, I have a special place in my heart for receiver to coach receivers for so long that a lot of times they're left out of it when people talk about running, but a lot of those long runs happen because the receivers are downfield doing such an excellent job blocking. And certainly um, Corey and AJ, you know, and, and those other guys get, a lot of uh, recognition for catching the ball, but they also do an outstanding job blocking down the field. So um, give those guys all credit, but Derek's also, you know, he's just, he's more comfortable, you know, and I think it's like anything else, the more you do stuff, the more you see it, it it becomes a little bit more like second nature to you. And I just think 
it's kind of the evolution. I think he he's seeing things and he's able to anticipate things a little bit quicker. And so it's allowing him to, to make quicker decisions and maybe sometimes squeak through things that, you know, a year ago he may have been a step late, but because of his size, able to make it through, um, you know, because of his size, whereas now he's getting there and maybe hitting it a step quicker because he's more comfortable and he's seeing things a little faster. Thanks, Tony. Uh, Terry, last one. Tony, in the middle of the season, Ryan Tannehill told us that, you know, Derek's carries and numbers were, were down a little bit by design just because it was unsustainable. What was Derek's approach during that time? Because I know he's a guy that wants the ball as much as possible to help the team. And how much did that pay off down the stretch run by being able to use him more? Uh he is the ultimate team player. So if he didn't like it, he's not going to say anything anyways. Um, but, you know, he want, he's competitive, so he wants to be out there. But once he realizes that, okay, we got to give you a break, we got to, we got to help you. Uh, he understands, you know, and, and he then cheers, he cheers on and coaches whoever's out there to try to try to help them. Um, and he, and he knows that, uh, when we get in crunch time um, and, you know, even if it was early in the game, we, we, we were trying to get somebody in it's so that in the second half of games that he would, he would be a little fresher. So he, he understands it. He's an ultimate team player and he'll do whatever we ask him to do. He'll do whatever coach Braves and art ask him to do. If it means helping us team win. Sneak one more in here. Uh, Jim, are you still there? I am, and, and I don't know, Tony, I bounce back and forth, but how much pride, I don't know if you answered this yet, but how much pride did you take in, in seeing Derek go over 2,000 yards and now being able to say you've, you coached a 2,000-yard rusher? I was just excited. It's just, you know, it's one of those things that we're winning as, as, as an organization, so that makes it even, it makes it even better, you know, uh, that everyone gets to share in this moment. And everyone on this team at some point in their career – or when they're done, we'll be able to say they took part of being on a team with, you know, AJ going over a thousand yards as a receiver, Ryan's accomplishments throwing the ball, John News leading, uh, touchdown catch, tight ends and touchdown catches to Derek running for two thousand yards. It's just been, you know, uh, to see Darren Bates and and Malcolm and all those guys on defense, Jeff Simmons and all those guys excited. I mean, it's just it's fun to be a part of this organization and. Um, it's fun to be a part of such a historic thing. And, and maybe I won't quite understand it or really appreciate it until uh, we're out of the moment. Uh, but I'm extremely excited for Derek, the old line and, and the, the guys on the offense that are all that have all taken part in this. Do you have any bonus in your contract? You get a, a big bonus for, um, <laughs> for a 2000 yard rusher. No, sir. Are you an agent? And maybe you can talk to Braves and John for me. <laughs> <laughs>